So hi and welcome to another review and today something a little bit different we're going to be doing a comparison between the Razer Viper Wired and the Razer Viper Wireless that are both recently released. Now I haven't done a comparison for a while and this time I'm going to do it totally different. I'm going to use all the statistics that I've been using for things like the force gauge meter, the 1000 FPS camera, the weight and all that data I've got in charts and we're going to go through these mice and compare them in 10 categories things like movement latency, button latency, glide performance on the pads and give you an idea of what the differences are on these mice considering one is more expensive than the other. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel, I do review mice, I review keyboards as well that I need to get back into. I'm going to do some monitors and I do a lot of other tech to review. I have a gameplay channel so you're going to see me playing things like Rainbow Six, Ring of Elysium or Insurgency. All the links to these channels or anything I mentioned in this video will also be in the description. If you want to catch up on any of this data, it's going to be on my beardybob.com website. It's a little bit behind at the minute, but over Christmas, I'm going to update it and get all the information back in there. So you can see all the charts and all the comparison information to help you see which mouse is good for you. So we'll be doing a separate review for the Viper Ultimate here. But for now, we're just going to compare these two together. If you want to check out the shape, I've already done the wide Viper. So all these things apply to the same as the Ultimate, the wireless version, because these are identical in shape. So there are quite a few differences in this mouse that you might not expect so it's worth staying around to see what those are at the end of this we'll count the score out of 10 and we'll see which one comes out best and that might help you determine which mouse you think is right for you if you're not familiar with my measurements i've got a video on these again links in the description and i'll explain what my acronyms are here and some other tests so you get a good idea of really what the results are so starting off here well the price the viper wide is 79.99 uk and us dollars and the ultimate is 149 US dollars, 149 pounds. So quite a difference there, nearly twice the price. So we're going to give the first point to the wide one because it's the cheaper version. So weighing these together, while well, the weight of the wide version is 71 grams and the weight of the ultimate wireless is 76 grams. Therefore, this is a lightweight mouse. We're going to give the point again to the wide version. So moving on to the scroll wheel here, and this is the force actuation, and this is where there is some differences in these mice. Although these scroll wheels look identical, they've got the same texture for the rubber, they've got the same looking scroll wheel. When you open them up, you will see, as we are doing here, that they have a different scroll wheel structure, and you can tell that because the Ultimate does feel quite a lot stiffer to scroll through, which I don't particularly like. It's using a different encoder, and also it's using a different press mechanism, as you can see, compared to the wired version as well. So that wasn't something I expected to see when I took these apart, but when I was using them, I could tell there's a difference and hence I took them apart so I could see what that difference was and there is one in this body. So the force gauge meter, well, we put this across the two mice here and we do three measurements and I'm just going to tell what the average is here. But the average for the wired one came in at 191 grams of actuation force and the wireless one came in with 170 grams of actuation force, which means it's lighter to press. Like I said, it's the actual scrolling through that's more stiffer on this and that's the encoder itself. They both got 24 notches as well, so no difference there. Therefore, I'm going to give the point to the wired version here. So the wired is now 3 to 0 on the ultimate wireless. So moving on to movement latency, well, we take five measurements for each one here. And again, I'm just going to show you the average one here because it'll take forever to get through this video. We've got rainbow six and the average latency here was 13 milliseconds for the wired one and 28 milliseconds for the wireless one. In CSGO, it was 20 milliseconds for the wired, 21 milliseconds for the wireless. And in Kovac, which you all requested, 17 milliseconds for the wired, 20 milliseconds for the wireless. That gives it an average if you compare all those as an average as well. It gives an average of 17 milliseconds movement latency for the wired version and 23 seconds for the ultimate wireless, meaning the wired one is looking slightly quicker here. Well, again, we'll give it an extra point here as well on the score. So now it's 4-0. So moving on to the glide test. Well, again, another difference here on these mice is they have different feet. The wired one has two full feet and a center one on the sensor. The wireless one's got two PTFE feet on the rear, one on the front, a long one, and a one over the sensor. One of the problems I find, and I spoke to Razor, is on the wireless one, when you put a bit of pressure on it, it digs into the pad. So you're not going to notice that in this glide test because there's no weight on the mice here. One of the other differences is I've also taken them with the cable, these measurements, and without the cable, so you can see what they compare like if they were both wireless. So starting off here, the NSW for the wired one was 21 grams and the wireless 20 grams. The NFW was 26 grams for the wired, 28 grams for the wireless. RSW was 22 grams for the wired, 21 grams for the wireless. 
and the RFW is 31 grams for the wired and 29 grams for the wireless. That means that the average force here to push the mouse across, the wired is 24 grams and the wireless is 25 grams. If we take a look at the results for the wired here with the cable, the NSW is 26, NFW 41, RSW was 28, and the RFW was 43. And that would give it an average of 35 grams force. So I'm gonna give this one to the wireless because you're not gonna use the wired one without the cable. You get an idea if you used a bungee perhaps and lifted some of that cable off the mat, maybe if it was interfering with it slightly because there's, there's 11 grams of force difference here on these with the cable or without the cable. So moving on to button latency here, again, we're using the 1000 FPS camera. We've got Rainbow Six again here and it comes with an average of 41 milliseconds on the wired, 33 milliseconds on the wireless, 53 milliseconds in CSGO on the wired, 41 milliseconds on the wireless, and in Kovac, 41 milliseconds on the wired, 30 milliseconds on the wireless. So that gives these an average of 45 milliseconds for the wired, 35 milliseconds for the wireless, which is interesting to see. So you can see here the wireless one maybe has a different PCB, maybe slightly better, or I don't know, with the latency on the buttons there, because the wired on one in the movement. So second point to the wireless, it's now 2.4 here. Going on to the switch, because I want to take out some of the pre-travel in the buttons, as we've talked before in the other tests I've been doing. And the results here are Rainbow Six, the wired version came in at 42 milliseconds, the wireless 39 milliseconds, CSGO 45 milliseconds for the wired, 42 milliseconds for the wireless, and in Kovac 43 milliseconds for the wired, and again 43 milliseconds for the wireless. So that gave them an overall average of the wired one 43 milliseconds for the switch latency, and 41 milliseconds for the ultimate. So the ultimate, again, the wireless one won again, therefore another point to the wireless being four, three now to the wired one. So going on to human benchmark here and around these two across that, obviously the name is in human benchmark. I am some of the latency as I am in some of these tests here. So we have to put me into a bit of a factor there, but at least I'm one variable that's standard across all the mice. And the wired one came with an average of 167 milliseconds and the wireless one came with an average of 161 milliseconds which kind of ties up to the button and the switch latency. Again, the wireless one is quicker with the press here, which is interesting to see it's certainly consistent here. And again, that's another point to the wireless, which means now it's for all. So final blood PK and the left mouse button came in on the wired one with an average of 151 milliseconds and the wireless one came in 157 milliseconds. The right one on the wired came in average 160 milliseconds and the right came in on the wireless with 161 milliseconds on the wireless. That gives the wired an average of 155 milliseconds together and the wireless 159 milliseconds, which then puts the wired one as the winner in this button test. It's not gonna win any other ones, but this one it's won. And it's another point to the wired one. So we're going to the bump test, and this one I was quite excited for because I wanted to see what differences you really are gonna see here against each other in that kind of real test, taking out probably a bit more latency from my side here because it's just using a Sharpie across them. I'm gonna try and 3D print something when I can get used to 3D printing. It'll allow me to do this a little bit better. But for now, we're going to have to stick with the Sharpie. So in the bump test, while well, the wired one won here, the left mouse button on the wired one was faster. And in the second test, the right mouse button was faster also on the wired one. So the wired one won this one as well. So another point to the wired one, which makes it 6-4 to the wired mouse here. And that's it. The wired one, which one would I pick personally? If I like the shape, I'd pick the wireless one, just because I don't like the cables at the minute on this Razer Viper could power cord it and that would probably be quite a good comparison to be fair i'd also upgrade the skates on the viper as well I've also done a video on that so check that out as well so if you like this test i'm going to do the gpro wireless versus the ultimate as well as comparison let me know before i do that if you want to see any more tests or whether you like this kind of structure i want to keep it quite simple i might compare the shapes because obviously they're slightly different unlike these two here so as always thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you all soon catch you later bye bye